charts and so is saturn and so i was looking that up and uh that could be really good for like politicians and for people who like find out i don't know anyways what he was saying so anyways i was telling danny i was like yeah, i'm gonna be a politician and i'm gonna be rich because i have moon and a lot of the eight houses about whatever just on that and then he asked me okay well if you're gonna be a politician who's pre who's gonna be president and my prediction is not who i want it's not who i would vote for necessarily um but my prediction is it's going to be Kamala Harris. And then he said, well, she's not even running, is she? I was like, well, she wouldn't put her name in the hat this early because there's going to be a lot of criticism. Already there's just going to be criticism for anybody who's running for politician, for president or any any uh, office for that matter. But then she's going to also, on top of it, if she starts right now, they're going to start criticizing what's going on in the White House. And right now there's a lot of stuff not good going on in the White House. Like uh, they just ended, um, they were giving people with food stamps, extra food stamps, like 200 extra dollars a month in food stamps to help with the whatever for the COVID. Well, then the prices of everything starts to inflate and they drop that. So everybody loses that, which, you know, is no big deal, except for the fact that food prices are now higher than they were before and they're just getting higher and they sent and at the same time sending Ukraine a package for 40 billion dollars so they'll keep fighting and keep ordering weapons I mean they just there's no need for it so anyways my prediction is Kamala Harris will win because the Democrats have had a strong like they're a stronghold on the house I think the Democrats have had a stronghold on it um well since well you could say since Obama became president but I think since uh Clinton was in actually I think it's well, actually I don't even know actually what I think but I do think that um I think Kamala Harris will win because they want a woman president. I don't, I think Tulsi Gabbard is much better. And I think, you know, if the media would give her the chance, but then if the media would give her a chance, then, you know, I don't know what would possibly happen to the people that don't want to give her a chance where they, you know, her name wasn't able to be Google searched for like the whole two hours after she had that really good success in the debate against Kamala Harris, bringing up her uh, record as a judge, a state ju a criminal judge or whatever, and taking parents away from their children for smoking pot and putting parents in jail for smoking pot and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of person we need as a president who thinks about stuff like this because a lot of mental illness is coming out of these, you know, poor neighborhoods or, you know, the uh, poor to middle class. A lot of mental health problems come from the damages caused by like separating parents from children, like all this intervention that they're doing. They're doing it here. They're doing it overseas. It's not helping. It's creating more problems. But I don't know what the world plan is. They didn't let me in on it. But I would say right now, if I were to guess, predict who's going to be president. It'll be Kamala Harris. It'll be a Democrat and it'll be annoying. Not because it's a Democrat, but because it's somebody that the people did not choose. It's to me, I mean, to me, Biden didn't even win presidency. It was all fake. Now I feel like they had that plan because I, I can see right through that shit. You don't have to believe me, but I can see right through it. I can see through it when I listen to it, when I hear the stuff that they're talking about. It's like, I hear it and then it's just like, oh God, you know, but my heart wants it to be different, you know, wants things to be honest and, you know, fair and whatever, but it doesn't look like it's going to be that way. It looks like the greedy people are, because there's like, how much, what is it like? Uh, what did they say? Four trillion? No. I don't know. There's like 40 trillion or something dollars that was going to be inherited, that was going to be passed down to heirs of that money. So legacies of people. So, you know, like people my age are going to have to learn to market to people like my children's age and learn, like just learn different things, different lingos. But really what sucks about being like 40 years old and then having to learn how to appeal to, to market in an age for millennials or, you know, 18, 19 year olds. And then to think about like the 10 year olds ahead of that time and just thinking, oh my God, I like, I don't know where to begin with these, with these guys, even though I have children, I haven't been with them. So I don't know where to begin. I know I like music, but I've been listening to some of the music that like my children listen to or that they've said they listen to like Doja Cat. And I'm like, oh no, no way. You know? And I'm like, listen to this, listen to this. Like I like King Crooked, Eminem, MIA, Balti, uh, you know, I still love Pantera, Marilyn Manson, Shine Down is really good right now. I like Shine Down. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm like old fashioned, and when it comes to country, I'm really old fashioned. You know, so I don't know. It's kind of hard to uh, be an adult and like when you. I don't like to be an adult. You know, I, I look at myself as immature and um, whatever, but. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. What was this video? Oh, yeah. I was. I came here to tell you my prediction for the president of 2024, which is a long ways away. But check out. I guess if we, I was thinking, gosh, should I do that? Should I just start watching politics so I could criticize it? You know? It's a good idea. You know, it helps. It helped last time with the human trafficking. I just wish I would have known. I wish I would have been. I wish I would have remembered some of the connections that I could have made so I could have given a more educated response about how I felt about human trafficking and the causes and where it's stemming from. Now, the human trafficking that where people are like drugging up people off the streets that are like runways. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that cartel does make when they bring people over. If you don't pay for your ride, they do make you pay for that. And I can't really fault them on that. I mean, maybe the way they do it. I don't know if they're abusive. I never had to deal with them like that. But if I would, you know what I would do? 
is I would tell the cartel that what they need to do is train these people to be like, like make a military. I know I'm telling the cartel to make a military, but that's only if they want to take the violence out of their extreme. And that's, I mean, there's some violence that's necessary. Like is shooting someone in the head considered violent? I think it is. But like the person who shot up the, um, the grocery store recently, like a person like that, like you should definitely do a public execution and make an example out of it so it doesn't happen again. But my guess is that they, it's not like, it's not really about prevention. It's just about awareness. And then, uh, targeting and label, labeling future people that they could say are problematic or delinquent or a reason for gun control. They do these, these, and being that it was from Buffalo, New York, then, I mean, that makes the, the questionability of whether it was a, um, a, what was that false flag operation? The chances of that being from Buffalo, New York, I think it's like, you know, I think they're hinting to the woke crowd, like, yeah, we lie. And we will be as obvious as a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, because what Buffalo lies, you know, whatever. Or, or um, I noticed that the translation for medicine cards, for animal medicine cards, and there's 52 of them, there's 52 cards in a deck. That's a really good way to randomize if you're putting people in positions or you're categorizing people and you want to do it covertly through the animal medicine cards, like everything's got a role and everything. Well, Buffalo, is the prayer in abundance. And when I think, I know a lot of people, when they think of prayer, they think of this and God, blah, blah, blah. But when I think of prayer, I think of people like focusing and concentrating on what it is that they are hoping to bring to their lives. And I think about it in a, like a stalking, kidnapping, like kind of way like that. But like, but it, I shouldn't think of it like that, but my brain just does. And maybe, I don't know. Maybe, but so when I think of Buffalo, I think of lies. And then I think of prayer and abundance because I don't, I mean, the only thing I get in abundance is reality and no reality checks because I have no money, just reality to check, to make sure, you know, I'm still alive. Oh, and then I find out that with Saturn, with, in, with Saturn and a lot of these eighth houses of my divisional charts, that it prolongs my life. The one person trying to not live a long life because I can't afford it. So I smoke cigarettes. I um, eat whatever I want. They'll tell me what to do. I'm not going to the doctor. I go to the doctor for the psych because they make me do that. But if they didn't make me do that, I don't think I'd have these problems. But those injections that they give you, they can make you like more crazy. Like they can make you more crazy. Plus the pesticides that they spray like in the yards and that they come in once a month and they spray in the bathroom and the kitchen for whatever. Those pesticides cause mental illness too. So whatever. And then just always, you know, you know, post-traumatic stress, which the state caused a lot of my post-traumatic stress and they'll never recognize it, which is why I have no problem going and doing oversight of politicians and what they're talking about. And then coming back and criticizing it to the American people. And if they're doing a good job, I'll say they're doing a good job. And then I would hope that somebody would counteract that argument, argue, not argue, like mean argue, but debate that count with that, that point and show me where I can be wrong because I like to like fill in the holes and I don't like gaps and knowledge. I like to know the truth. I like to not beat around the bush. I like to get straight, nip it in the butt. I'm like a drill sergeant with the way that I speak. I overpower conversations. I don't mean to, but I have something to say and I feel like I don't have enough time to say it or you won't give me enough time to say it. So I have to articulate it in a way that is shocking to get you to listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. I don't like to be that way. It's not always becoming, but most of the time it's unbecoming. But anyways, my name is Jessica Bailey and I'm not running for office. I just want to tell you what to do. No, anyways, that's not what I want to do. I wish I do. I don't know. I was thinking like, I was waiting for like Coach Redfield to call me and see if like, I want to like try audition out for like a podcast and see if like, you know, our conversations, like our chat would like mesh with, you know, bringing it to the American. Cause he's, he knows how to do all the stuff. He's got all the connections. He's got a thing already. I would just have to need someone who would want my mouth. And I like Coach Redfield the way he talks, but you know, that's probably never going to happen. But anyway, say Coach Redfield, what's up? Hope you don't mind me starring on my YouTube channel, but you know, don't, this is not a reflection of him. He does not endorse me. He does not promote me. He probably may not even agree with anything that I say, but, um, I agree with a lot of things that he says. And, uh, so I, uh, if I was an endorser, I would endorse him or I would, I would promote him or whatever, you know, I'd give PR, good PR and you know, I got, yeah. So anyways, uh, that's my prediction. That's my update. And, uh, this is my pretty face saying hi again. What else am I doing? I don't want to say goodbye. I want to keep talking. What do I want to talk about? Well, that was really all I want to talk about with my birth chart and how amazing I am if I wasn't such a shitty person. I'm still trying to come to terms with that shitty person thing. I just, it's not sitting well with me because I don't feel like I'm a shitty person. And that's just the truth. I don't feel like I'm a shitty person, but maybe I'm a shitty person. Maybe, maybe, maybe like 20% of the time of my whole entire life that I've lived, I've been a shitty person. Maybe I'd say between 20 and 30% of the time, which is way too much of the time to be a shitty person. I should definitely get that knocked down to about two to 3% of the time. So that way I can sacrifice virgins and make me some like aftermath money or death row money. Well, not death row. Cause that's already Suge Knight might not want that. I might not have any money left. I wouldn't ask him. I'd be too... I don't think I'd be scared of Suge Knight. I was roommates with his ex-girlfriend or maybe even his girlfriend now, Vila. Hey, Vila. Yeah, she was cool. I liked her. She was my favorite. Favorite room. The best roommate I had. We used, I used to get uh, tons of Benadryls and I'd take a bunch of them when we'd go to bed at night and then I'd be up like all night because it would have the opposite effect on me because I have ADHD so things do that. But anyways, yeah, she told me the whole story about, you know, what happened and stuff and 
It was really not, I mean, it's a little bit different than what you hear, but not much. A little bit different, but not much. But she was cool. So, Vila, if you see this, hey. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, and I saw a video. I was watching, um, I don't think it was YouTube. I don't know. It could have been YouTube. Probably. It must have been, because they don't have behind the music anymore like they used to. But that's why I heard that Suge Knight was an intellectual. Like, he likes to learn and study and stuff. And I was wondering, like, if I could ask him a question, I would ask him, like, did that come, like, as you got older? Or did or have you always been that way? Because I haven't always been that way. It's only been, like, as I've gotten older. And then I was just wondering, like, what type of, like, what type of topics interest him? The type of topics that interest me are politics, sociology, history, war, and... Um, and stuff like you know just like i like to see how factories work like how things work and stuff stuff like that statistics i like to read statistics to just to see like what's what uh yeah and anyway so that's what i like and i don't know the guys so it'd be cool if i did though you know but i wouldn't ask him for any money or or music career because i can't sing or anything but you know it is what it is but anyways have a good day enjoy your day and i hope you enjoyed this video and comment below what is your prediction who do you think will be president in 2025